You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here for Drake Wing Gaming. It's Sunny Mouse, one of the gaming drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Nevin, a Cat's Path. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe Work videos. Anyway y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> In addition, Ambassador Tenok has assured me of his cooperation in transmitting the information. He will do everything in his power to ensure that everything goes as smoothly as possible. Can we truly trust him? Oh, <clears throat> Astrid, right? Can we truly trust him? He has been here for years, and so far he has always kept his word and worked for an, and worked for Intente between our nations. From what I've seen, he seems to be mostly concerned with the Intente between our people and himself. I understand that he rarely sleeps alone. No matter how he spends his free time, he takes his work to heart. I can confirm what Prince Maeldorn said, Lord Vol. The Ambassador has helped us to conclude several contracts that have greatly contributed to filling the Kingdom's coffers. So Kazal seems to be under control. As always, it appears that the real problem is Makad. I fear that they see the acquisition of such a brand by our Kingdom as a provocation. You know as well as I do that they are just waiting for an excuse to try to invade us again. Let them come. They will freeze again. Not to mention that we are far more powerful than we were 50 years ago. Our mastery of the brands is the best in all of Telson, and the kingdom is now fully united under the banner of our kings. We will crush them. It reminds you of the consequences of the last war, Vol. I will not inflict another famine and civil war in our kingdom, but if I can help it. Not to mention, Lord Vol, that Makad has changed as well. The losses they will suffer during the invasion, whatever the outcome, will be mostly slave lives. I refuse to be responsible for their deaths. One of our missions has always been to support the slaves as much as we can. I take it Makad didn't appreciate that. That's... that's one way to phrase it. Our relations with our neighbors have always been tense, but since our lords Lusk and Aeon openly welcome the runaway slaves, any excuse seems good for conflict. Not that I mean to say it, it was a bad idea, my lords, far from it. Edwine almost seems to bow over the table, as if he fears the kings will punish him on the spot. I knew that the leaders of Makad did not appreciate us, but I did not know that they were so opposed to us. But is it true that if we officially welcome the runaway slaves, it must be a strain on our relations? However, I also, I also think that Vol is not wrong. No one has ever managed to invade us, as far as I know. We are protected by our mountains and our winters. Not that I want a war, far from it. I just find it hard to understand what Makad could gain from it at the moment, that's all. But asking for details now seems like a bad idea to me. I don't want to appear totally ignorant. We could try to ease tensions, to assure them that we are not looking for conflict. Perhaps we should offer them a gift. Something of value. That seems to be the easiest way. I suppose. We have several items we can part with, relics that I am sure will be well received. Once again, my lord, if I may, I think I can offer a better solution. We can reopen the Inkstone Mines. Many contacts have informed me of the high demand. New word and notes. notes. Oh yeah, notes. Inkstone. I've never seen one, but from what I know, it's a nasty thing. Basically, it's a stone that's found almost exclusively here in Frostfang, and which can increase the power of a brand. The main problem is that it's also very likely to kill you, even drive you mad. Eon has completely banned them and is keeping a close eye on the mines where they are found. Huh, okay. No. It's the greatest resource we have, my lord, and even a few gems would undoubtedly help. I said no, Edwine. I will not change my mind. For a brief moment, the room seems darker, and I feel as if I can see Aeon stripes dancing across his body. It only lasts a few seconds, but the impression left is clear. This is indeed a matter in which the king will not change his mind. I've never seen an inkstone, but I've, never, but I've heard of it. The stones increase the power of the brands, offering, some, offering them to someone who claims to be our enemy seems stupid to me, so I can understand Aeon. Not to mention the risks. From what I've heard, almost no one can handle the extra power the stone brings. With that much power, the brand destroys the body of its wearer. The permanent closure of the mines is one of the first orders of our kings. Not only would we offer our enemies a way to strengthen their armies, but unlike us, they would not hesitate to sacrifice their soldiers to test the stones. Once again, I will not allow slaves to suffer because of our choices. I understand, my lord. I was merely suggesting a possibility. Your suggestion has been heard and rejected. Does anyone have another idea? 
Silence briefly follows. No one wants to piss off Aeon anymore, but it is eventually Vol who speaks again. The sending of a delegation could also... However, he is interrupted by a knock on the door. From the puzzled looks of the council members, something tells me that this is not something that happens often. Come in, and I hope it's important enough to interrupt our council session so abruptly. The door opens slowly to reveal Simi's small figure. She looks genuinely tense as she steps forward, which seems to have the effect of worrying the people around me. I guess this is also something that happens rarely. My kings, my prince, my lords of the council, I apologize for inter interrupting your discussions, but I must give you some urgent news. But don't worry, Simi. I know you wouldn't bother us for nothing. Speak up. Our scouts have returned, my kings. They found traces of the Macadian of the Macadian envoys. It would seem that they have suffered an attack of some kind. So far, there appear to be no survivors. All the members of the caravans are dead. Someone attacked the Macadians? And they're dead? All of them? That's that's impossible. They were guarded. I doubt they took the side roads. Whatever happened, it must have been on a protected path. Who could have taken such risks? And above all, why? Think I know. All right, y'all. Let's jump right back into it. All right. <clears throat> Shit. No one reacts immediately until Lusk clears his throat. Thank you, Simi. I'm afraid we'll have to postpone that council meeting in light of this news. Lady Astrid, prepare the letter to the God King, please. Explain, in, explain it that we have nothing to do with the attack and that we will do everything we can to hand over the culprits to Makad. Edwine, please seize a sum from the royal coffers that you think is sufficient to compensate for the loss of the caravan, and then increase it by half. We will send it with the letter. Vol, I'm going to need your best priest of, best priest of Moranai. We will inspect the scene, look at the corpses, and try to see if we can identify exactly what happened. We will continue this discussion later. The council is adjourned for now. Simi, lead us to the scouts. I wish to learn all there is to know. And so the council ends. It wasn't exactly what I expected, but at least for now I have no complaints about the decisions made. The lords stand up and walk out to carry out Lusk's orders while I stand here, sitting in my chair, trying to figure out exactly what is going on and what it all entails. At the corner of my eye, I see Melbourne leaning over to chat briefly with Simi. Then he leaves us alone. The death of the Macadians continue to plague my thoughts, especially for what it implies. It could mean war between our two nations, and that would be my fault. It is because of me that these events are happening. They left the capital in such a hurry, is it? A hand on my shoulder interrupts my thoughts. I lift my head to find myself face to face with the old Fennec. It is not your fault, kid. Excuse me? The attack of what might happen next. It's not your fault. You don't have to carry that weight. How do you know what I was think? How do you know that's what I was thinking about? For someone whose job is to act on stage, you seem strangely unable to hide your emotions off the stage. And maybe you should work on that. Am I that readable? I have some practice at it, if that makes you feel any better. I guess I'm just a bit lost. I'm not sure what to do to help. For now, I think the best thing you can do is to keep training with the brand, with your brand. Leave the situation with Makad in the hands of those who know how to handle this kind of emergency. She offers me a brief smile and sighs. I can't stay, unfortunately. I have a lot of work to do. Try not to think about it too much. Distract yourself a bit. You deserve a break. I guess I can try that. Thanks, Simmy. She simply nods and walks out, leaving me alone. Simmy is right. Get a grip, Eloi. The world doesn't revolve around you after all, and this sort of thing probably takes weeks of planning, and it's probably just a coincidence. As for relaxing, I may have time to unwind tomorrow with a kit or walk around town, but I'll be able to get it all out of my head as I stroll the streets with a falcon under my arm. At this... At this thought, I can feel something stir briefly in my chest, a tingling that almost tickles. A familiar sensation, but I can't quite remember why. I shake my head. This is not the time to dwell on such things. I can always think about it later. Right now, I need to figure out what to do when I get out there. I get out of here. I should probably go and see Melbourne before I meet up with the cat. It might take a while to explain to the Falcon what happened. He'll probably want to know what was said at the Council, but I wonder if I can tell him everything. In any case, I should start by visiting my favorite prince. I finally leave the council chamber as I head for the royal quarters. As I pass by Melbourne's room, I hear sudden shouts. Since there is no guard at the entrance, and since I am unable to fight my own curiosity, I approach and put an ear against the wall. So you know. Alright, drama. Told you I wanted them to survive. I didn't think the animals would go fucking berserk. I've never seen that. You know very well how much I know my job. It's not normal. Makad. I never heard him raise his voice like that, even less so against the prince. But Melbourne also sounds upset. 
Normal or not, Makad will think we are behind their death. They will take any pretext to put obstacles in our way. Fuck! Aren't we? Responsible for their death, I mean. Are they talking about the Makadian envoys? What would they have to do with a wild animal attack? I would have arrived in time if... Not another word, Vakad. I never wanted this. I just wanted them to, to fear for their lives. I wanted you to be their savior, that's all. It's too late for that. Now what? I don't know yet, but someone will have to take the blame sooner or later. And I'm the obvious culprit, aren't I? I'll do my best to not let it land on you. Hmm. I know what you were thinking, Vakad. It is my fault. I am fully aware of it. But surely you must understand that I cannot be the culprit in this case. Yeah. I walk away from the door as quietly as possible. I clearly wasn't supposed to hear any of this, and I definitely don't want anyone to know what I heard. As I walk back to my room, I try to figure out exactly what what could have happened here. Is Mailbird really to blame for the deaths of the Bacadians? If so, why? And what was this whole discussion about the animals? Why would he want Vakad to appear as a savior? One thing is certain. I can't talk about what I've heard with anyone, at least not now. Whatever is happening, it's going to have huge consequences. What have I gotten myself into again? As I go back to my room, I'm surprised to find a cat sitting on my bed, watching me enter with a worried look on his face. Please tell me you haven't spent your day waiting here for me. What? No, I went out. I got myself something to eat. I look at him, insistently, as he averts his gaze. You, you can't blame me for being worried, can you? Me? Blame you for something? Nah, I just think it's lovely, that's all. I take a moment to enjoy the red rising to his cheeks before I sit next to him. I don't think I'll ever get tired of it. I told you not to worry, though. It's not exactly like I can control this. I guess not, but you see, it's alright. I'm not locked up or sent to the other side of the world. And I'm thankful for that. Uh, what has been decided, actually? I take a moment to think about it. What exactly am I allowed to tell him? I don't think explaining the outcome is a problem, but I doubt telling him about the attack is a good idea. The Kings probably want to give an official version of events, and right now I have no idea what that might be. Not to mention everything I've heard in Mailborn's room. Eloi? Oh, hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, the council must have tired me out more than I thought, that's all. But basically, I'm confined to the city. I'm not allowed to go outside its walls. I also have to train my brand and learn how to fight. That's about it. I'm more or less free to do what I want. So, can we still go for a walk tomorrow? Oh, that's that's what you were worried about. I... Uh, ooh, excuse me. It wasn't a, It wasn't about my welfare. Uh, just You just wanted to make sure you didn't end up on your own for that little walk. <laughs> I'm saying no. Oh, God. Hiccups. No, no, that's not it at all. Really? I'm just, I'm glad I can spend a day with you, that's all. I can't stop smiling like an idiot. I don't know why it makes me so happy, but I'm certainly not going to complain. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm looking forward to spending some one-on-one -on -one time with you, too. A silence falls between us as a vaguely familiar feeling runs through me. A mixture of expectation and fear that I can't quite identify. No way to remember why I have this feeling of familiarity. All I know is that I like this moment very much and I wouldn't mind it lasting. Alas. I should leave you alone. I'm not kicking you out, you know. I know, it's just, you were right earlier. I shouldn't be spending my day in your room. I can walk with you for a bit if you want. That's nice, but there's something I need to think about. Oh, am I allowed to know what? Maybe later. I want to be sure of what I have in mind first. Alright, very well. So keep it mysterious, Mr. Feathery. I stick my tongue out at him as he gets up to leave my, leave my room. Shall we meet in the morning? Sure, I'm already looking forward to it. He smiles at me and leaves the room as I drop onto my bed. It's when it hits me. I remember that familiar feeling in the times I experienced it. <clears throat> Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. If y'all want to get your names and, uh, names and, uh, blah. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye